First of all, I want, I want to thank uh, Director Avner Shalev and all his uh, educational team for this uh, incredible experience of this uh, conference. My experience, of course, is a little bit different. I am not a specialist of the education. I am not an educator myself. I am a manager of a site, maybe of the site, uh, a site that is today a very big crossroad of different sensibilities, different emotions, different approach, ideas, of different memories also. And of course, this crossroad is subject to terrible traffic jams sometimes. And this is not uh, easy in our today life if we want to save the lisibility, the readability, the, 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 the essence of what uh, should be transmitted in the Auschwitz-Birkenau uh, site. With 1,400,000 visitors last year, guided in 20 languages, and 75% among them was very young people, very young people, even not the third, many times the fourth generations. From different cultural, religions, civilizations, uh, in majority non-Jews, this is a little bit the background that I want to, 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 to this is the place that I want to speak, uh, speak here, here today, uh, a few remarks. Of course, our first, first mission in education is to, is to help educators, because many of those groups are coming in some bigger projects that started some days or weeks before, and I will be continuing after the visit. We will save them for three or four hours, and, and everybody thinks that we will make, of course, some miracles in this, uh, in this site. In miracles in terms of memory, this is the basic thing that we have to obtain, I think, during this visit but also about the awareness, this particular, let's say, understanding of this history of the Shoah, and even in time of responsibility, that means that mean an understanding of myself and my role in the today's history, in the today's uh, times, in the, in, the, in, in the future that we have to build, uh, with my comprehension of, uh, of the Shoah of that time uh, that was 70 years ago. And in that perspective, we can have any minimalizations of our role as educators, of course. We are dealing about the essence of the history. We are not dealing with a history, we are dealing with the history. And in that term, if we consider the Shoah in his uniqueness, we must arrive to a uniqueness of understanding. It is not an education like all the others' education. You can't, not, you can't you can, uh, let's say, not understand the mathematics or, or the geography, but if you want to participate in the building, in the world that we have to build, if you have to take your own responsibility, if you want to understand your role, you must understand the essence of this education of the, of the Shoah. It's not easy. It's not easy but because uh, the today's generations, these fourth generations, these generations that the grandparents was burning after the war, uh, are very complex, and I will th show three major problems, tasks, or difficulties that we have to face in those days. First of all, and Professor Rosenfeld was speaking about a little bit, the new generations are emotionally more far from the essence of the Shoah, the concrete, concrete sufferance of the victims. Something like this, it's supposed to be, I think, a piece of art. I'm not a specialist in the modern art, but it, it comes from the beginning of the 21st century. I think it was impossible 30 years ago. 
I think really it was impossible 30 years ago. What that mean? We are more emotionally more far from the essence of the Shoah. And young people especially, of course, because it is not their own history, it is not the history of their parents, even it's not the history of their grandparents many times now for the 15, 16, 17 years old people who are coming to visit Auschwitz. They have an approach of judgment, they have, uh, they have some artistic uh, explorations of this site, they have a use of the Shoah as a tema, a label or a symbol, we, we, everybody knows that. But this is a major difficulty for the future, because this process will certainly continue. There are also generations marked by a renew of anti-Semitism. Now it's uh, more apparent as uh, so-called anti-Israelism. And in Europe especially, I think it should be a growing problem of understanding of the Shoah, especially by the young people. Uh, it's very hard to explain them that it was not and let's say a, a moment, a tragical moment in the history of Europe, that it was a turning point. There was a Europe before and there is a Europe after. It was a turning point of Europe. If you consider that the European civilization fought in the time of the Shoah, in all his fundaments, in the Christian values, in the humanism and his traditions, in the positivism, the modernity, the legal principles coming from the anti-Greece, all that values, all that system of values was not enough. That means that we have to redefine the fundaments of Europe. And in this perspective of today criticisms against Israel is something very, very difficult. To explain them, that the Shoah is not a Jewish question, but it is not an Israeli question or a political question, but this is a European question of an understanding to the deep of what was and what should be, maybe, in the future Europe. This is a turning point. And the third question, of course, that is very, very difficult to explain to those young generations, that the never again doesn't function after the war. Uh, people that have 16, 17, 18 years old reject very easily paradoxes. And the history of others' genocides after the Shoah is considered by the majority of them as a paradox. Uh, so we need some answers, and uh, of course those answers should be, uh, should be taken in many different uh, levels. I want just to focus on one of them, because I also need some answer as a person responsible, to, responsible about the, the readability of this site. It's maybe not an answer, but a proposal of research of an answer. If a young people have a doubt, avoid the understanding, suspect an uh, ideology, for example, we have maybe to confront his, him more to the authenticity to let him have his own experience. Today, or nearly, we'll have only two authenticities after the Shoah. We have the testimonies of the survivors on video, on audio, in books, and do not underestimate the art. The art is speaking about the Shoah, the art of the survivors, without words. So the feelings are maybe more easier to be transmitted, especially in different languages, in different cultures. Uh, and we have the sites. We have the sites, and those two authenticities need themselves, really. I am sure about this after six years of responsibility of Auschwitz. Those two authenticity, the words of the survivors and the sites, has to be put together today especially. The testimonies, the books, those worlds, let's say, fire the imagination of young people. Take them to the limit of what is, let's say, possible to imagine. 
with their own young experience, and this is normal. But the authenticity of the place, of the site, bring back this imagination to the real, to something you can touch, to something you can go through, something that you can see and you can compare, something that becomes, let's say, an area of your own understanding, an authentic space of individual reflections in order to think about the words from the testimonies of the survivors. And I will show only maybe one example. This is the sauna of Birkenau, the central sauna, so-called. There was an exhibition organized more than 10 years ago, I think, in this building. And it is, in fact, an anti-exhibition, because there's no exhibitions in this building, except, of course, the faces in the last uh, piece, in the last, uh, last part, something to restore the, 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 the humanity, as Rabbi Pollen was uh, insisting on uh, a few minutes ago. But the visitors are just walking through the space of this sauna and see the different spaces. Here people have to give out the, the clothes. Here they was uh, cut. It. Uh, here they receive, I don't know, some, uh, some other uh, clothes from the camp. And this is an experience, only an individual experience to going through a passage, rite de passage, like, like, like the French anthropologists will, will, will call it. Uh, yeah. But of course, this is only an example of an anti-exhibition that show more than all exhibitions should, more, should, should, should explain uh, in every other, other spaces. But the whole site is, of course, an experience of going through, and this experience is very, very important. I think, really, this is a key. The people that, that learned the history, that was prepared, that received some authentic words of survivors, that received some testimonies, must have this last key, this possibility to going through, to have this personal experience, to feel this rite de passage, those silences in Birkenau. And of course, what is the experience of authenticity? It's something very, very difficult to, to explain in a conference, in a tent, uh, here in Jerusalem, because we are speaking about an experience of authenticity. It would be easier to, 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 to speak about this in Birkenau and not, uh, not in this tent. But I will just show I will try to show what, the, what it is, this experience of the authenticity, through some, some photos. Here you have the Rampa in Birkenau, very, very well known. But this is exactly this Rampa. This is the place of the selection, in the middle of the rampa. And this is this place. This is the entrance to the women camps, one of the worst place for the prisoners in the whole complex of Auschwitz-Birkenau. But it is this entrance. And this is the Lagerstrasse, the last few hundred meters before the gas chambers. But this is also this site. Of course, Auschwitz is the last great center of the Shoah. 
still readable. Still, Birkenau uh, is, is the last space that you can understand the organization of this space. You can understand the, all the phases of the, uh, of the story. And this is the site that we have the maximum of testimonies because of the uh, opposition of the dead center and the, and, the, and the concentration camp. And this is maybe the only one site when we have those incredibly Auschwitz album that is 300 meters from here in uh, Yad Vashem. Thanks to Yad Vashem sharing these pictures with us, of course. Uh, so it may be easier to speak about the authentic space of individual reflection. But this is the authenticity that we have to, to, to preserve, as well as we have to preserve the words from the testimonies of the survivors, because those two authenticity needs themselves in a full. That's why we are creating this Auschwitz Birkenau Foundation. It's quite a success un until now in terms of fundraising. We have not finished this project. We will continue it. It will be a big endowment that will help us to preserve this authenticity in order to, for, that our children or the children of our children will be able to put together the words of the survivors and the geographical site of the Shoah and of their own reflection in the future. But everywhere it's possible to define an authenticity, an authenticity to be experienced in the light of the words of the testimonies. For example, the Theresienstadt, I think, should be more visited because it's the only one real space of a ghetto that you can, you can, you can see, you can feel. I think wonderful some groups that are coming to Auschwitz through Theresienstadt, for example, because they, they do, again, let's say, authentic way. They can understand those, those, those stages, those, those, those different moments in the last weeks or months of the life of the Jewish victims. But also in, in Ponari, in Panerai even, we were last year with Anna Shalev discussing with the Lithuanian governments a possibility to renew, not renew, let's say, make it more readable, make back this authenticity without those, I don't know, 10 or 12 monuments, maybe not in contradictory, the one with the others, but certainly not helping to understand the space of Ponari now. I don't know if it will be, if you have some solutions in the future, but we have to try each time that it is possible to explain to the authorities that there is something very special to be preserved and to be saved. We have this same discussion with Sobibor now, but even Isu, Mechel, and all the silent spaces of hundreds or thousands of killing sites in Europe can help really the next generations and our young children in their own way, through the memory, through the awareness, and through their own responsibility. Toda. Thank you.